to the St. James Infirmary Saw my baby there She was laid out on a cold white table So cold, so white, so fair Let her go Welcome to Friends with Deficits. I'm your host, Adam Sultan, and my next friend is Jamie Rhodes. Jamie's an artist, musician, a general all-around creative person, and she's currently creatively dealing with a pretty serious predicament. So prepare yourself. Even though this is a professional podcast, I have nothing prepared. That's fine. <laughs> I just kind of want to hear your story. Mm-hmm. I had my version of it, and then I heard it got a lot bigger, so. Yeah. About five years ago, I I just got really sick, and, like, my eyes swelled up, and my lips looked like really bad Angelina Jolie lip injections. It was just, like, <laughs> horrible. And I just felt terrible, and I went to doctor after doctor, and they were like, oh, yeah, go see this guy, go see this guy. And finally, um, they gave me an allergy panel, and then... Um, and that was miserable. What do they do in an allergy panel? It's like this big sheet they stick on your back. And it has little squares of different allergens to see what you're actually allergic to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm allergic to the adhesive, like, incredibly badly. <laughs> so it was a little bit hard. But how, how did they figure that out? Because my when they, were, when they pulled it off, they were like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then he was like, well... No more Band-Aids for you, and uh, you're extremely allergic to nickel. And then these two other preservatives that are antibacterials and antifungals, they're in, you know, vaccines. They're in most topical ointments, most soaps, most cleansers. So it was just everything. And then I was like, what? And he was like, yep, come see me on your next breakout. And then he gave me this list of stuff I might be able to use, but it wasn't like accurate, you know? So he's like, good luck for all, for the three allergies he determined. He gave me what they're in. And it's like money, paper clips, your keys, doorknobs, zippers, you know? It's That's, like, is that primarily nickel? Yeah, because okay. it's the most common alloy. It's in everything. I can't play the guitar anymore. Can you play a classical guitar? No, because the, the high, high strings and then the frets. Oh, the frets. Yeah. Yeah. But I got a plastic ukulele, but I hate the fuck out of it. <laughs> it's no guitar. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It sucks my butt. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't, it was okay. It was pretty manageable. Started wearing gloves, you know, so I could touch stuff and go places and do things. Um, but then about six months after I was diagnosed, my twin called me and she was like, dude, I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, oh, well, this happened to me. And she's like, oh, crap. And I'm like, yeah, go get a panel. And so she went and then she's allergic to all the stuff that I'm not because we have two we're different lives, you know, and then we just keep getting more and more things as we get older. And then like last year, she's in, uh, like molecular biology. And so she was looking at our DNA results and she was like, holy fuck, we're mutated. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yes, it's the MTHFR gene. And, and she's like, and that's really not good. And we're mutated in both the ways you can be. It's a uh, MTHFR gene mutation. MTHFR gene mutation. 
Do you know what the MTHFR stands for? It's a like a word with like all the letters of the alphabet that's like a mile long. So, you know. Yeah. So, and then science nerds call it the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, you can't methylate. You can't process toxins in your environment. So, after you've had a build up enough, you can't handle it anymore. It becomes a histamine response for the rest of your life. So whatever you come into contact with, whatever you work with, whatever you love is eventually going to be stripped from you. Based on just exposure to it? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And there's no treatment and there's no cure. You know, it's just like, it's, it's very frustrating. I spent five years going to so many doctors and the specialists don't take insurance a lot of the time. And I have several doctors I wish I could see just for maintenance, but I can't afford them. And are you just constantly discovering symptoms? Yeah, and I'm just like, well, I don't know what set this one off. You know, I don't know. Can't tell, you know. And it's just like, well, I'll just start eliminating everything again. But I'm just so down to nothing that I just don't even know. So it's like, okay, well, can't go to the grocery store anymore. Can't go out to parties, can't go out to eat, can't go to bars. If, like public bathrooms are gonna give me a migraine every fucking time. Never mind, I'm allergic to toilet paper now. Whoa. Yeah, can't use Kleenex, can't use paper towels. How do you get out, like at all? I don't really. Well, you work. I know, I, they, I don't go to work on Thursdays because the maids come. Or if they do, or if I have to, I work in the garage. <laughs> I have a computer in the garage where they're not allowed in. So, um. Do you drive? Yep. I can, yeah, I got my car, but I have to wear my gloves for the certain, you know. But yeah, I went to get my oil changed like three months ago, and that didn't go very well because of the f air freshener. You mean the kind of hang from your mirror, or just. No, uh just in the building. It's oh, okay. buildings. It's like seriously, like or I, or someone wearing the wrong cologne or perfume. You know, it's not like I, it's not something I can control, or you know anything. It's just like good luck, kid. By the end of all the doctors, every single one of them said the same thing. It's just maintain the bubble. Maintain the bubble. I I, I was surprised. I wasn't gonna walk into like a big plastic bubble. No, yeah, it's this is my bubble. This is yeah. my good feeling bubble. At least you can have a yeah home. Yeah. You can call the bubble yeah it's safe yeah is it it seems like there's so much stuff here yeah but i don't touch the art on the walls mm -hmm. <laughs> i can touch everything in here pretty much like i don't you know and you made some art are you do you still make art this is mine yeah i have a lot of stuff in here so i remember you had a series when i first heard about this that was all nickel shit i can't touch shit, yeah, I, shit you can't touch there's that those two metal prints yep. yeah and you still do? You still work with art? Or yeah, art yeah. When I when I have the energy, yeah. I do different stuff now. It's more like I send my son out on missions to find weird shit <laughs> and bring it back to me, and then I figure out what to do with it. Yeah. I'm allergic to the sun, which is weird. Weird. Allergic to the sun. Yeah, I know. Since I was a kid, that's so what gives us life. I know. So that was the one like odd like little flag and then um certain soaps always bothered me so this is since you were younger yeah this. those were the first like signs what would happen oh the blisters and mm -hmm. the skin mm -hmm. peeling and but you're migraines. not talking about just getting a sunburn you're talking about just just any kind of limited exposure to the sun yeah it would be and it was seasonal so it's like my my body would forget like how to deal with the sun and then once it got you know the spring came and i was out in the sun i would get this horrible blistery rash and then it would be like oh i remember what to do now and then it would go away but it happened every summer you know what would you have to do to stay out of the sun or? yeah and they would give me this cortisone cream but it's really it's bad because it thins your skin out and you're not supposed to use it long term so it was a steroid i mean steroid yeah. What were the other ones early on? You said soaps? Yeah. 
Irish Spring is my I, nemesis. <laughs> I hate that shit. It's really bad. I hate it anyway. I don't, I don't have an allergy, but yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I remember that one. That was very painful. Do you have special soaps and things that you have to use now? Yeah. Are they, are they medical or is it just... No, actually, um, I'm still getting away with Sensitive Skin Dove. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've lost all antiperspirants, so I kind of smell, but... In a pretty way. No, I'm kidding. I don't notice anything. <laughs> um, yeah. And coconut oil. That's all I use. Good good for the... Even the bubble girl can use the coconut oil. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, that's not very funny. The bubble girl. <laughs> I don't like to really call myself that, though. I try to... You know, I do spend most of my time trying to make this funny and easy. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. Sure. I do a lot of deflection, and also, when I start talking to people about it, they're just like, oh, you should do this, you should try this, you should do this, you're not doing this right, and I'm just like, they want me to be sick in their way, and they're like, oh, come on, don't you feel like this or that, don't you feel like doing this, and I'm like, no, I really fucking don't, and they're like, you're just lazy, or you're just, you know, you're just being a brat, and it's just like, no, dude, if you understood the amount of fatigue, like, I don't know, you've never been pregnant, but when you're pregnant, you are so fucking tired. This is like a little bit worse than that, where it's just like, there are some days I cannot get out of bed. I'm just so tired. And it, I'm just not that kind of person, you know, to be like, oh, I'm lazy, because I'm not. I'm just like, it hurts my feet to, like, miss parties and friends and people and other than avoiding things do you take other medication yeah there's this th holy trinity of allergy stuff Zyrtec, Zantec and Singular and they are all immune suppressants for different parts of the body but the Zantec there's something in it that doesn't work for me so um, the nickel allergy affects your digestive system, your joints, brain fog gives you migraines, like brain fog, you just can't, can't remember and you're just like, wait, what was I doing? And it's just like really like, like you just woke up and you're just like, what, what day is it? Or, you know, it's just really, it's part of the whole fatigue and exhaustion. Is it always a sense of fatigue? Is that the most pervasive kind of quality of this? Yeah. Yeah. But it's the digestive system is really hard. It mimics celiacs kind of. Do you have to change what you eat? Oh, my God, yes. I can barely eat anything. It's very boring. Because there's a lot of foods that are high in nickel. No, I can't have any whole grains. Um, no leafy greens. Those are high in nickel? Yeah, they pull it up from the earth. Yeah. No seafood. You know, wow. what's your, what's your main sustenance food wise? Uh, protein, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower, romaine lettuce. I make my own bread. There's not very much in there. Blueberries, I can have. Peaches, I can have. It's very boring. <laughs> Sounds good so far. Yeah, <laughs> that's like a, it. Sounds like a balanced thing. Oh, we just finished? Okay. Yeah, that's really it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's not not great. Yeah. Also, like if I've had an exposure, I can't taste anything. I never feel hungry. So it's like I can go like three days and be like, oh shit, I forgot. I totally forgot. Because I just don't feel it. Hmm. What about liquids like or coffee? Stimulants. No coffee, no coffee, no tea, no, no juices, I've, no processed foods, you know, so I just drink water. You can't have fruit juice of any kind? No, nope, it's all processed. What if you make it yourself? What are you going to make it with? Uh, wood? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of time. Make me a wooden blender? <laughs> make me a wooden juicer? Yeah. Man. I have all ceramic cook stuff and knives and I can have sterling silver. I can have sterling silver. 
18 karat gold or better, titanium, platinum, or copper. So Jamie, as long as it's good enough for the queen. Surely you deserve a, yeah, a solid they don't gold even have blender. Needles I can use. Really? Yeah, yeah. So getting my blood drawn is a problem. Going to the hospital is a problem. Do they not have special needles they can no. substitute stuff? So how do they draw blood? They don't? Or? Hope for the best. Well, they stab me and then they try to squish in a plastic catheter as quick as they can. Mm. But it's still an intravenous exposure. Yeah. And so it's pretty bad. That usually lasts three to six months. From a needle yeah. prick? Yeah. Do you, have you been hospitalized for this? No, I had, <laughs> I almost died last year from typhus. <sighs> so I f dragged my ass down to the emergency room and trying to explain all of this with a 106 degree fever is not great. Do you know, do you have typhus at this point? No. I don't even know what typhus is. Right. It's a bacteria carried by ticks and Is it like fleas. typhoid fever? Or is it? No, okay. it's totally different. Okay. It's just very high fever. Um, and I had it for like a month. I went to the doctor and got antibiotics, but it's only treatable by one. So then I had to go to the emergency room. We did the blood draw and all that stuff. And they did the catheter and he was like, I would never send anyone home in your condition, but I know if I keep you here, you're just going to get worse. Mm. Took a cab home at three in the morning with a 106 degree fever. <laughs> Any, and any meds for the fever at least? No, I had to wait to get my prescription for the next day. I had to keep with the um, Advil and then two hours later, Tylenol. Two hours later, Advil. So I had to wake up every two hours to not die. That's hardcore. Yeah. Do you have any moments of respite from this? No. Do you sleep relatively well yeah i mean anxiety this this is all very anxiety inducing i think that's why i've worked so hard to make this home my little safe place mm -hmm. but then like if i have things i need to like if i have to go do something for work like go down to the railroad commission to file some paperwork i get very nervous because i don't know what's like if I'm going to get exposed to something, I only have about 30 minutes to go get home before I can't function. What do they mean you can't function? I start losing vision and the migraine is just so bad. It's just like I'll just start throwing up with too much light or sound. You know, it's just really bad and that can last, you know, a day to three. So it's all just like such a big gamble. It's like, I don't know what's worth it and what's not. And I'm just like, fuck, I don't I think I'd rather stay home and watch Murder, She Wrote, or Carol Burnett, or my Columbo. Just let Peter <laughs> Falk talk to me. <laughs> talk to me, baby. The classics, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Do you have friends over here? Yeah, my neighbors and I, we, we all stick together and look out for each other. That's good. Yeah, it is good, yeah. Me and my friend Lisa, my neighbor, we go down to the Little Darling because I can sit outside mm -hmm. and we play cards and um, backgammon. Cool. And you've checked all that material? Make yes. Sure it's all good. You better believe it. They got wooden benches. Um, I can go in there, but their bar is all metal, so I just wear my gloves. But um, And they don't do air fresheners or anything toxic like that. But I, you know... I really miss going out to eat. I used to be such a foodie, you know, all the chef work I used to do and wedding cakes. And Was it pretty abrupt or was this gradual? It was abrupt sick? because I moved in here and the people who owned it then didn't, hadn't, hadn't had it cleaned. The painters had gotten paint all over the floor. And so I spent like two days cleaning out of a metal bucket with cleaning stuff that I'm allergic to. So this was like the crux mm. where it all just toppled because I was just scrubbing and scrubbing out of a hot water metal bucket, which is conducting the nickel through. And then I just got so sick and I couldn't figure out why. 
And, uh, that, and that was what started it all. Mm. This really just was totally tipped. What about your sister? Um, she, yeah, hers was about the same kind of abrupt, abruptness, but I don't know what her trigger was. She's so far away and we're, we're very opposite kind of people. So like, she doesn't call me, I call her, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we don't love each other. It's just how we are. She's right. very, we grew up here, but we moved to New England and, um, like fourth grade and she got the accent down right away and I didn't talk for like three years because I was just like, oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> Are you identical twins? Yeah, we're identical mirror image. So she's left-handed and I'm right-handed. And you said her symptoms are like the op opposite of yours? Yeah, or? it's all about what she touched. So when you put us together, it's like a nightmare because I can't have anything that she can and she can't have anything that I can. So it's like a perfect storm for being the most annoying people in the whole world. Louis has half of his father's genes. So hopefully that will override what I've got. That's your son. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do they think is the cause of it? It's, um, just a genetic mutation inherited by both on both sides of like my mom had one and my dad had the other. And they, it's just the m most horrible combination you could have wished for. So did they both have similar things? Oh. No, just takes the two to tango so badly. This is really something else. I don't know. It makes me feel like I don't belong here. That you seem to be, at least your environment, everything looks like I you try. Belong. I have <laughs> a really good, I have a really good attitude. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you talked to other people who have this? Haven't really found anyone. Online or anything like that? Have you looked? No. I, I've i done a little bit and then I just get really frustrated. It's just like trying to go through doctors, you know, finding the right doctors. You work, you work, you work, and then you come across somebody and they're like, I can't wear cheap jewelry. And I'm just like, fuck you. You know, <laughs> I'm just like, no. It just gets frustrating, and then I don't want to be like, well, I da da da. You know, it's just, I don't really like talking about it. So I do kind of isolate, you know. I don't want to, you know, like friends and family, I just let them say whatever they want. I'm just like, I don't correct them or tell them what the truth is because it's just exhausting and it makes me feel sad. It's like my job is to make them feel better about, like, okay with what I'm going through. Right. And it's just like, well, it's the easiest thing for me, even though they don't get it and they'll constantly be annoying, but I just don't have the energy and I don't want their pity and all that crap. It's just like, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. But I also would like to say, will you please just stop talking about it? There's nothing we can do. Just, just stop. Because they're like, you're not doing enough. I'm like, ah, really? <laughs> Great. I have to bring all my own shit to my doctors. I have to bring sheets and gloves. And they're not even, I, they're the least glove, like allergic glove that I could find on the market. You know, I'm still allergic to them. I don't have a dentist that will see me. I'm a liability. There's no, I would think that they'd have an alternative metals things no, to work with i have contact fabricators it's not commercially viable it's not going to make them money you can't bring your own needles to a doctor's office because then it makes them liable mm -hmm. for what I, if they weren't sterilized properly right so it's not even like i could get my own set of tools have you explored any alternative medics medicine <sighs> yeah but <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. know the answer to that. Yeah, no, it's really sad when you're like trying to educate your doctors. Yeah. And it's really upsetting when they're not really listening to you. They're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, oh, and this, you really need to get on whole grains. And I'm like, D did you not hear what I just said? Would you like me to, here, let me show you. Mm -hmm. I really miss oatmeal. I would eat it if I could, but it hurts. It hurts a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I get lovely rashes all over my body. Mm. And every place I've ever had an exposure, when I do get uh, a reaction, it remembers. 
So it'll go right back and be like, oh yeah, I remember I guess to party here. I used to party here. In and the same can, part of your body? Yeah, just... like this, my, like my eyes uh -huh. and my arms and my sides and yeah, I don't know. It's just remembers. Hmm. So any kind of exposure I have, any hot spot, it'll, it'll be like, oh yeah, I want to play. Like, let's assume you never, you didn't, you had a clean house when you moved in here and you didn't get out the nickel bucket and the cleaning product. It would have only been a matter of time. So it just would have been something else happening. Yeah. Huh. Do you think it's something that was happening longer than when you were symptomatic? Probably. I mean, well, I did a lot of sculpture and stained glass windows and all the chef, all the, all the cooking, you know, that's all stainless steel. It's all nickel. So it's like all the stuff that I touched. You know? Yeah. All right, here's a question I ask of everybody on this show. Um, what, if any, are the benefits of this? Well, I would have to say it makes you get really creative. And also, I think that... Um, It's really, you know, helping me find who I really am. You know, I think that like, well, in the beginning of all of this stuff, I was like trying to hide from it. Like, oh, this is, can't be real. You know, this is too ridiculous. And so I really drank too much and just tried to put it away and just not worry about it. But I've had to file for disability and to really talk about it honestly for the first time in all these years, it's really made me feel a lot better about who I am, what I'm going through, and why. And so it's a lot more confidence in being able to say, yeah, no, I know what I'm talking about. You guys can kiss my ass, you know? Like, yeah, this really is what it is. Yeah. You know, I don't, I'm not gonna make any more excuses. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I'm just going to say, yeah, no, I will probably say, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I can't make it, but I won't make, <laughs> but I won't be like, oh, I gotta, you know, oh, something gotta, came up. Yeah. I gotta do, I'm not gonna, you know, I just say, yeah, sorry. That's not going to work for me. Feel free to come over sometime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just think that, you know, when you have a condition that's really hard to figure out what it is and you're going from doctor to doctor, it's really really discouraging and exhausting um but you just gotta not give up and trust what you're going through it's nothing more frustrating when someone's like you're, oh you're you're being dramatic or you're, you're just it's all in your head when it's really not just don't give up and just keep keep looking keep going and because it's even if you funk, end up with a horrible answer, it's, it's a big relief to know what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you can do the best you can, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know? It's about taking care of yourself, letting you care for yourself. Really, you can't take care of anyone unless you've got yourself. And you can't count on anyone to take care of you. Was that your experience in the past of taking care of others rather yeah, than yourself? Yeah, I have a kid and, you know. How old is he? He's 17. He's graduating. But now he can go get my damn groceries. <laughs> no, he... Payback time. Payback time, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> when you were, like, before all this, was your, what was your general health and what was your attitude towards your health? I didn't think about it. Yeah. I was fine, you know. Were you very uh, active or? Yeah, yeah. I went to yoga twice a week and, you know, I did a lot of stuff. Did a lot of stuff with Louie and his school and homeschooled him for a year or so. And then, you know. Did you feel extra busy then? No. Do you feel extra busy now maintaining the life you have? No, I feel... Like, I get really, ah, I'm in the house so much, you know? And I think that's why there's so much crap all over, like the walls and mm -hmm. my garden, my morning glory canopy. Like, I do everything I can 
you know, to make it different. And I often will rearrange the whole house when I get too claustrophobic. Are you at risk when you do that? Like, are you nervous about touching things? No, I got it managed. I, I know to glove up or wrap this or, you know, saran wrap is good. Hmm. Yeah. What about gardening? How do you do that? Um, I don't really. I just use a stick. <laughs> Pull poles. <laughs> Pull poles. <laughs> yeah, I put my morning glory in seeds and scratch it over and, and <laughs> see what happens. Good. Let them grow. But yeah, I don't get into the dirt very much. Do you water? Can you hold the, hold a part of the hose? And No, I have like a, a thing that's plastic. Mm -hmm. And then I used a twist tie to hold it so I didn't have to squeeze it all the time. Yeah. But yeah, I can water. I MacGyver was my childhood hero. Really? Yes. I can basically figure out almost anything. That's good. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing art? Uh, well, I helped start a theater company when I was a freshman in high school. So, um, costume design and did work with um, Joe Sears and Kimmy Rhodes. And I've always done art and music. And Is it mostly theater arts and music as opposed to... Graphic art? Yeah, well, my twin, she was like, I'm the artist. She wouldn't let me take <laughs> art classes. And so I did theater and course. And so, and then, like, I wanted my, I started painting, I guess, really when I was around 20. And, or at stained glass windows was first, actually, when I was about 18, 19. 19? Yeah, 19. Is that your work, that stained glass? No, it's not. My mom my mom sent it to me for Christmas, and yeah. my son goes, that's kind of a fucked up present. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, she didn't mean it like that, Louie. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. How, how are you now compared to two years ago? Well, it's hard to explain. On one hand, you know, I feel very very isolated and alone but also a little more self-aware and honest with myself so that's the good things and the bad things yeah where do you see yourself in two years from now i don't know it depends on where louis goes to college or what he does mm. so you thinking of moving? Yeah, I think I might need to. Do you know where you might go? No. <laughs> I don't want to go to New England because it's too cold and my family's annoying. Sorry, Mom and Dad. I love <laughs> you. All this what's happening right now is pretty big. i got to get through that first. I try not to overwhelm myself. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. One day at a time. Yeah, that's good advice, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baby steps. Don't freak out. It's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done any other theater work? I can't even go to the theater. You could have a, a theater here in your house. I couldn't. I, I wouldn't I let in that many people in at once. How many people have been here? Or how many people can you host? They don't wear any cologne or perfume and no, like... No touching me. <laughs> so skin to skin, is that a problem or is it just what people wear? Yeah, it's what they wear or what soap they use. Like, it's, I don't really have lovers anymore because it's like, if I, it's really hard to meet people, number one. Number two, I'd have to de decontaminate them. Make them go take a shower. Before. Yeah, but that's not that hard. No, but it's embarrassing. It's just like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and hi, nice to meet you. Want to come over for dinner? Oh, hey, would you get in the shower? <laughs> you know, it's just like, that's not, I it's don't like see that It's like safe sex, working. you know? It's, just, it's the way you should educate people. Yeah, I it's know, like... but it's just not working for me. I'm not comfortable with it. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm, mm-mm. Huh. <laughs> you have to find somebody who's this, is like a big, clean, hygiene, hygiene freak. And... <laughs> That's all right. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need any more drama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying not to be too like, and this sucks, and that sucks, and everything sucks. But 
because it's really like I try to remind myself it's really all in how you how you want to look at it like yeah that's all hard but is your life over are you giving up no that's not really an option got a lot ahead of all of us right so it's just trying to find a way to be happy that's all that matters do you feel happy mostly I do yeah I mean I have my moments <laughs> I think we all do yes we do yeah so that doesn't make me unique you know we're all we're all struggling in one way or another so you can choose to embrace the negative and be like oh this fucking sucks so hard like my, that's what my twin would say and <laughs> with that accent with that ah oh, motherfucker <laughs> you, you freaking telling me this now uh really really oh my god and then you know or it can be just like well that sucks hey well well let's uh let's go play some dice or whatever you know like why don't you come over bring a beer let's play some cards or let's watch a scary movie you know you can just you can find ways to enjoy your life everything doesn't have to suck yeah only if you want it to but i just refuse yeah. I, I i'm not gonna live my life that way good good advice yeah <laughs> well thanks jamie thanks adam it's been great to hear your story Thanks. I'm glad you're doing this project. It's really good. Thanks. All right. I'd like to thank my guest and friend, Jamie Rhodes, for sharing her story, her home, and her kombucha tea. Uh, if you'd like to see some of her artwork and some photos and other stuff, check out our website at friendswithdeficitspodcast.com. Additionally, if you'd like to help support the podcast, visit patreon.com slash friendswithdeficits. I'm Adam Sultan. Think outside the bubble.